Joining us now, she's the head coach at Jacksonville, coming off a 29 and 20 season. Of course, I speak, of course, great uh, alma mater at George Mason. I speak of Erica Ayers, joining us back here on In the Circle. How you doing? Uh, good, Eric. Can't complain. What What's it feel like to have kind of a close to normal fall again after obviously not having one last fall, and especially this year where you've got a lot of new faces? Yeah. Um. <laughs> It's a lot of work. <laughs> um, I'll tell you, we got, we were fortunate last year, to be honest, on um, the university, we were able to do what we needed to do on the softball field. I mean, we practiced every day, um, you know, not having, not having recruiting, not having camps and clinics, you know, not being able to get out and fundraise, those kind of things It really allowed us to kind of focus just on the ball club. Um, and there was a lot of positives to that, you know, this fall, it's kind of back to the the whirlwind, you know, everything we do as a, as a staff, we we do it in the fall, you know, I mean, we're, we're developing, you know, we're recruiting, you know, we're running camps and clinics, you know, um, you know, we're having official visits, we're, we're fundraising, you know, all those things. So um, it's crazy time of year, but it's fun. Of course, you've been the head coach here since 2018. You took over for Coach Steele. You were on the staff. So obviously you've been a familiar, but I'm curious, what has it been like moving that extra chair now, having been in charge of everything? Is there some things you've learned here the, since you've taken over that you didn't know maybe prior to taking over? Uh, yeah, hundred percent. I think you know, just you know, as an assistant, you have you have your kind of area of the game that you're you're hundred percent kind of focused on. You know, as a head coach, you kind of have that that big vision. You're kind of the the umbrella, the whole thing. You know, you know, dealing dealing with external relations a lot more, you know, um, with boosters and fundraising and the admin and all that, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm really loving it. Um, and I'm fortunate enough. I got a great staff. Um, I've been lucky. We've had, um, a little bit of turnover, but everybody that's come through here has been, has been amazing. So I've been really fortunate with having great people to work with. Of course with 29 and 20 slash, it was such a weird season. And especially in the conference, the way that had to be scheduled with the splitting into divisions, which obviously we'll get into more uh, later. Cause obviously the league's going through a lot of uh, additions and changes, but what was it like to go through that season in 21? It's so unique. I mean, you played yeah. UNF. It felt like every other week, <laughs> the way it played out, I'm sure you and Marcy are kind of tired of seeing each yeah. other, but what was it like going through the season? Um, you know, uh, first of all, we were just re really grateful that we had one. Um, you know, it, it was it was a lot more local. We didn't take as many trips. Um, the conference was very, you know, I think it was Florida Gulf Coast, Stetson and us. We played each other six times and then we ended up having to play UNF another three to go to the tournament. So um, just we got really familiar with our opponents. Um, so, I mean, you know, we were just we were just happy to be playing softball. So um you know we had a blast with it and really and again a winning season 29 wins and, and really because i know when, when you took over you kind of had it was kind of a rebuild on the fly because you had a lot of faces there did you feel that the you know the players started when they started to buy in and you could see that winning culture now starting to settle in obviously coach Steele was building that but mm -hmm. you had to build it with these new players coming in yeah yeah i mean we had um that that first or yeah it was that second year just a lot of turnover a lot of new kids was was a bump in the road for us but you know we've been building um you know that class that just graduated last year uh holds a really really special place you know in my heart like they were you know when I got here as an assistant I think it was their freshman year and and they finished out they all came back for that fifth year when they got that extra COVID year and um just a really really special group that that yeah, definitely bought in and, and, and played their hearts out and, you know, went through, you know, went through the rebuilding and went through the grind and stuck with it. And, I, and I'm, I'm so happy that they got to, you know, leave on a, on a, on a high note and um, made a little run there at the end, but um, yeah, they, uh, they definitely have a special place in my heart and uh, you know, remember them forever. <laughs> well, a question you're going to get asked, I know between now and February is obviously Alyssa Billadu now is now a coach on the Clemson staff. First of all, let's talk about her. Then we'll get to yep. the pitching staff, but her mm -hmm. legacy at JU, uh, mm -hmm. a heck of a career there. And now going into coaching uh, as she's joined, joined uh, Coach Rittman's staff. Yeah, yeah. She's fortunate enough. She had a couple of different opportunities, ended up uh, landing at Clemson. Um, she's really excited to be up there. She's going to, you know, she's going to learn a ton and, and uh, you know, hopefully be able to, to you know, 
throw to them and help their pitching staff out a little bit too. Um, you know, I know she wants to coach, uh, so, I mean, she couldn't have landed in a better spot. Um, you know, yeah, she was, you know, finished her career, kind of breaking the all-time strikeout record. Um, she kind of was was the ace from the time she walked on campus till, till, till she left. And I think, you know, credit to her, she went through a lot of different pitching coaches while she was here, you know, so that wasn't, and, and she battled some injuries too, and that wasn't always easy um but the kid was tough as nails you know she persevered and you know my pitching coach now Amanda Haverman with the last last two seasons with her they really gelled and um you really saw her take off and um you know just just really happy for the way her career career went and ended yeah I mean she's going to go down there with alongside Sarah Caffrey is probably the two Mm -hmm. among the greatest in the history to wear the dolphin colors there Mm -hmm. You don't replace her, so I'm not going to ask you how do you replace her because you don't replace those players. I've talked to coaches for enough years to know you don't replace those type of players, but uh, you have other players now that step up, right? Next player steps up. So just talk about your pitching staff uh, now, what it will look like uh, and the approach here as we get to 2022. Yeah, I mean, we have, you know, Skylar Witte returning had probably the – I think she had – the most innings of any returner coming back and you know she was she had some some really really good outings last year I think she just was trying to find some consistency which you know she's she's been doing that this fall I mean we look for her to have a really good year and then we brought in um Allie Moraskin as a as a grad transfer who um really really great high school career in Florida um kind of has bounced around her whole college career but she's having a great time and I think she's really found a found a home here and and I think she's going to have a, a phenomenal year I think she's going to have the ball for it a lot um you know and then we got another transfer from Austin P uh left-handed pitcher Shelby uh Shelby Harp um you know who again has battled a little bit of injury in her past but but on the right track I think she's going to help us a lot too so you know it's going to be you know um just a lot of different arms, you know, kind of, you know, trying to figure it out. You know, I really do think Allie Raska is going to get the ball a lot. You know, um, I think she can, I think she's going to, her and Skylar, I think can lead us. And then, you know, we've got some good supplemental arms behind them too. Yeah. You feel you could get that one, two to kind of develop, especially Mm -hmm. as you get into conference play where you have those three games, you'll go back to three game series and no deal. And you have experience. Skyler's got experience from pitching last year. Maraskin's got experience mm-hmm. from her time at FIU as well. So it's not like you have you're you're bringing in a bunch of rookies here. Right, right, right. Yeah, no, we definitely have experience. So and we're and we're built around pitching. Kind of, we kind of always have. You know, especially since I've been here, like that the game kind of starts and stops in the circle, and that's an area where we always want to be good and give ourselves a chance to win. Um, so you know, I don't I don't think this year's squad's going to be too much different we're definitely going to pitch it we're definitely going to play defense and um you know hopefully we can figure out a way to score enough runs to win you mentioned amanda haverman your pitching coach Mm -hmm. Uh, let's talk about how you were able to get her uh because she's been a tremendous find since joining your program your pitching numbers across the board have improved since her arrival i think their era was uh, improved by over a a run improvement Uh, yep. What is it about her that's made this immediate impact? And of course, she was part of the Florida Tech staff where you found there was she. Of course, she had tremendous success there in that program there uh, under Coach Val Silvestrini there. So, what what was it about her that you found that you found that would be a great fit there? And obviously, has made a big impact. Yeah, no, hundred percent. Well, I mean, she was on staff here when I when I first got here with Jen. Um, she was Jen's GA, so so we were familiar with each other. Um, you know, she stepped away from the game for a little bit. And then came back to Florida Tech, and um, you know, to be honest with you, we were we were chatting at a. I think we were recruiting somewhere. We were chit chatting, and you know, I was telling her I was looking for an assistant. I really didn't know that she was, um, you know, interested in, in making the move. But you know, she loves Jacksonville. Um, she loves Jacksonville University. She loves the city of Jacksonville. Uh, we get along great. Um, you know, so you know, when she was interested, that was that was a no brainer and, and and really really easy decision um and then what makes her so great um two things number one uh she she builds relationships she loves these kids like like the just she's able to get the most out of the kids because of just because of the person she is and and how much she cares for them and and that thing and then number two um she knows her stuff I mean she's just really really good at at developing you know I mean these kids 
yeah, you know, Alyssa was a, was a great pitcher, um, but she, you know, Amanda helped her a lot. You know what I mean? She just, she just, she's a great developer and she's a great person. Um, and I hope I have her forever. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and to have somebody that loves the city of Jacksonville gets the program too, had to be a big help. You yeah. mentioned she was always there on the staff, but just knowing the area, knowing the mm-hmm. city, uh, every, every, that has to be a big plus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. hundred percent. hundred percent. Yep. Yeah. And she, and she knows the kids and she, you know, good recruiter. Um, you know, she can, she can identify talent kids that can get people out and, you know, she's just, again, I can't, I can't praise her enough and, and I hope we're together forever. <laughs> uh, no pressure there. Uh, yeah. talk about obviously your, your offense and sort of how did the outlook there for your offense? And certainly it helps you got, yeah. you know, your best hitter coming back, Victoria Rodebaugh hit 311 last season, 17 RBIs. Uh, what, how is the offense looking this fall of, do you think for 2022? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, we lost some kids that, that were productive and we have some kids returning that were productive. I mean, I think, you know, like you said, Tori wrote a ball, um, uh, Madison Kennedy, Allison Braytech, those three kids, um, that, that were a big part of our offense last year are coming back. Um, they're going to need to, you know, to lead, lead these new kids. And then, you know, the, the thing that I think we have, more of this year than last year's speed. Um, a lot of our, a lot of our transfers, a lot of our freshmen coming in, we just have a, a tremendous amount of more, like more team speed than we did last year. So I think we, you know, we'll be able to create, you know, if we're not, you know, hitting doubles and home runs and finding those runs that way, I think we're going to be able to create a lot more havoc than we have been in the last couple of years. Speed is something. Speed is something. I know you and you and I have talked in the past. That's something you've wanted as a, as a part of the identity in the offense. Is that like always when you get into recruiting? Is that the hardest thing to find, or is it more power to find? Uh, because speed, obviously, especially yeah. nowadays, more and more hitters are being taught to hit for power, not running as much. So, and you know, there's been some rules that have been against slap hitters, although they've finally amended to that a little bit. Yeah. But finding speed and athleticism part of the mm-hmm. process there in recruiting. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you're looking for, you know, bigger, faster, stronger kids. You know, you want you want balance. You want some kids in the middle of the lineup that can drive the ball and, and score with one swing of the bat. And then you want some kids, you know, at the top and bottom that can that can create some havoc. You definitely want balance. But, you know, I can't I can't teach speed, you know, so if we can if we can find it, you know, we can we can work with that and um, speed. I don't think speed slumps very often. Right. You know, you know, so um you know, you definitely, it's definitely something that plays, especially against great pitching, you know, at the end of the day, at some point, you know, you know, there's going to be somebody that slows down your, your power hitters. Like, can you, can you create runs a different way? You know, and I don't think, I don't think speed, speed slump. So, you know, we're always going to try to have that, that piece of it. Um, You know, some years, some years we're better at it than others, but. You mentioned some of the new faces on the offense. Who are some names that uh, Dolphin fans could kind of be keep an eye, remember there, keep an eye on that you think can make an impact uh, yeah, on your I ball mean, club? I think um, from a speed aspect, a few of our freshmen, uh, you know, local kid, Maddie Braytech, um, Allie's little sister from Creekside, she runs very well. Um, she'll probably be running around the outfield a little bit. Tatiana Davis from down in South Florida is a, a good speed kid. Um, a couple of our transfer kids, um, some junior college kids, Joely, uh, Guizimon and, and Logan Keith, they're, they're both really good athletes that, um, you know, can play a bunch of different positions and, and create some things. And then returning, you know, Madison Reynolds, um, was a freshman last year, um, you know, has really come back a different kid. So I kind of look for her to, she's very athletic, but, you know, she came back a little bit more serious and, and ready to get after it. And, and I look for her to have a pretty good year too. Uh, just somebody that, that, you know, fans didn't really get get to see too much last year, but I think, I think she's going to make a name for herself this year too, you know, and then from a power standpoint, you know, uh, Kaylee Harrigan, a freshman last year, she got hurt in the middle of the year. So she never was really the same, but, but she can provide, you know, some thunder in the middle of the lineup um, too. So her and Caroline Watson, I think, you know, from a DP pitch hitting standpoint, can, can uh, come in and, and hit the big fly for us every once in a while. So Defensively, I know you love talking defense. That's a passion of yours and, and something you feel it's critical, and it, rightfully yeah. so. How do you feel about your defense, especially when you have new faces? How do you blend that yeah. in? What's the key to kind of 
fit, fitting that in to make have a solid yeah. defense behind your staff. Yeah, I'm going to be 100% honest with you, Eric. Right now on October 12th, I don't know what it looks like yet. <laughs> we have – we I but here, let me tell you this. We have phenomenal pieces. We have a lot of pieces that can play a lot of different positions. So right now we're running a bunch of kids out in a bunch of different positions. Um, my Myself and my staff understand that they can play a lot of different positions with their athleticism. They're still feeling their way through it you know, a little bit of uncomfortableness in, in different spots. But um, I really think the versatility that we have is going to be a strength once we figure out, you know, who co- what what combination kind of fits best. That's a good that problem to have. Sense. That's yeah. a good problem to have. Yeah, it is. It is a good problem. Um, you know, as a coach, though, you'd like to be a little bit more sure about what's going on. But it definitely is a good problem. And um, we're having a blast, like, trying to figure it out and, and the kids competing and, and stuff like that. So um, the competition is good. And that's, you know, that's driving us, the whole squad to get better every day. So I'm not complaining about it. We just, you know, we just, we're still figuring it out, to be honest, but we've got, we've got three or four kids that can play, play up the middle at a, at a pretty good clip. And, and, you know, whoever wins that battle, you know, usually we can spread them out. There's some kids that play the infield that probably going to have to go play some outfield at some point. Um, But yeah, it's, uh, it's to be determined. No, that's a good but, but that's like, a good but I like the pieces. Yeah, no, and that's a good problem to have because it's better than like, oh yeah, you already know who's playing, but then you have no really other options. You have some options here. You have some depth here and some options that you could do. And that's critical in a season because you know, I mean, you've had some injuries you've had to deal with uh over the years since you've been there that you've had to deal. And it sounds like you have at least the roster to kind of uh kind of offset some of that, especially with the versatility that you've developed here and built. Yeah. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. Um, we definitely have some depth and, 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 you know, as well as everybody else, a lot of it's going to come down to, to who's helping us score runs. Um, but, but I'm excited about it. Um, you know, I think we're going to surprise some people. And you need that when you play in a strong league, like the a sun, mm-hmm. which is coming off a two bid league. First, let me ask mm-hmm. you that. Cause I've asked all the coaches, how mm-hmm. big is that to get two bids in Kennesaw gets in as the at large Liberty, obviously mm-hmm. wins the, the automatic bid. But to have two bids, they're showing respect. The committee showing respect to the league, which is something I know in talking to the coaches they've been fighting for uh, yeah. for years here, trying to say, hey, we should be a multiple bid league. Look at the RPI numbers. The league has been at times a top five league, top six league, but it hasn't gotten rewarded on Selection Sunday. It did, though, this past year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, 100%. It's huge. Um, I think our league is is extremely strong, and I think you know more years than not we're – we're at least too deep, um, you know, looking at all these new teams coming in, you know, we might be three deep, you know, so um, it's definitely, definitely huge to get kind of the, you know, the a sun brand out there on a national stage. Um, cause, cause it's really, really good softball. And you mentioned the new additions. You got Eastern Kentucky who was in the tournament last season, Jacksonville mm-hmm. state, which has been a prominent NCAA tournament program. Uh, you've mm-hmm. seen them. And then central Arkansas, your reaction when you heard with those three coming in and then you got Austin P yep. is going to be joining the following year. Um, my reaction was that's a lot. That's a lot of wins and a lot of titles <laughs> joining the league, <laughs> which is awesome. You know, from a competitive standpoint, um, it's phenomenal. You know, um, I think, I think it's great. Um, you know, geographically it's, 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 it's growing, it's getting big. So as a league, we're trying to figure out how we're going to manage that, you know, from, from a conference setup and travel perspective, but um, really, really good coaches, really, really good programs, um, a lot of history. Like it's going to be, it's going to be great. It's going to be, you know, great competition. It's going to be fun. I'm excited. What does that mean from your standpoint, from a scheduling standpoint in conference? And then how does that affect you scheduling non-conference with the league getting bigger? I mean, is the schedule being yeah. expanded in the league or is it staying at the same number? What's the talk among, yeah, among the I league? Mean, I think, Right now, going into this this spring season, we were we're uh, east and west. Um, so you've got you know Liberty, uh, Kennesaw, and then the Florida schools, us UNF, Stetson, and Gulf Coast um, on one side of the bracket, and then the other six um, on the other side. So we'll play we'll play a three game series against everybody on our side, and then I think we have three crossover games with the other side. So I think this year we've got Bellarmine. Eastern Kentucky and North Alabama are our crossover series. And then 
think the tournament's taken eight. I think tournament's at Liberty this year. And so they're taking like the top three of each side. And then the last two, it could come, two could come out of one side. If, if I think we do, we're going by RPI or something like that. Um, so, uh, you know, that's kind of how we're dealing with it short term. Um, I know, I know it's a, a mixture of opinion amongst us coaches on whether we want to play the full everybody or, or keep it, you know, and I think, you know, from my perspective, it's as a competitor, you want to play everybody for sure. Um, it's hard to, you know, I don't love the idea of going to a tournament and having to face one or two teams I haven't seen all year. Um, you know, but I also understand the, the financial side of it and, and how, you know, hard that is to, to travel that much, you know, um, and the financial burden it puts on, on some schools. So, you know, you know, a lot of good people, a lot of good coaches in the league, good people at the A Sun. You know, we'll, we'll hash it out, and figure it out, moving forward. But, but, no matter which way you slice it, the league is tough and competitive, and and going to be a blast. No question, and I think a strong statement that it should be a multiple bid league moving forward. If everybody takes care of business within the league, I would imagine that's what the conversations are internally. Hey, let's take care of business from a non-conference standpoint. And then, you know, we'll take care of each other from that standpoint and, and be the multiple bid leagues. Uh, some great programs and coaches, as you mentioned. Uh, I mean, I, I got to believe the, the it's an exciting time to be in the league as a coach. Oh yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. You know, really, really good. I'm just looking at our side of the bracket and, you know, we battled tooth and nail with, with UNF nine times last year. And then, you know, the other four of us ended up making it to the tournament. Fortunately, like it's, you know, just, just our side of the bracket's tough. And then you look over at the other side and you're like, man, there's a lot of, a lot of wins and a lot of titles on that side too. So, um, <laughs> you know, it's great. It's exciting. It's, it's, it's awesome. You mentioned obviously other coaches, Shelly Robinson is going to be a first year mm -hmm. head coach at yeah. Stetson. She was on the staff for coach mm -hmm. Griffin. Your reaction first note, coach Griffin retiring, uh, and then, you know, Shelly taking over and talking about, hey, you know, and, and I've had other coach assistants like Jeff Conrad, they've talked, spoken mm -hmm. highly of you about how they look at you coming from the assistant, Kenny, the, taking over the program. I think Shelly kind of talked about that, too, when I spoke to her. What does that mean to have people mention you as like people they look to and say, you know, she's doing things the right way. I really like how she's handled herself from an assistant to coach. It seems like you've you know almost all the coaches. That seems to be the running like deal, whether it be the assistants or the head coach. Uh, well, first of all, I mean, uh, thank you <laughs> very much. Like, I mean, that makes me feel good. I'm glad, you know, um, that's awesome. Um, I mean, I love those guys. I think, uh, you know, I'm really happy for Shelly. You know, I think, um, yeah, I think she's a really smart young coach and um, has worked really hard and, and, and deserves the opportunity to, to, to go do it. Um, so, you know, and obviously, you know, Frank was, you know, a legend at Stetson for, for so many years and, um, you know, uh, you know, God bless him and, and, and hope he's doing well in retirement. Um, you know, but I, I think, uh, just, you know, happy for Shelly, you know, and, um, I have a good relationship with Marcy and Jeff over there at UNF. I mean, cross town rivals, it's, you know, it's competitive and it's, and it's fun, you know, um, kind of a team you love to hate, but, um, I think, you know, as coaches, as people, like we, we get along and respect what each other does. So, um, you know, yeah, I mean, that, that, I'm honored. <laughs> Makes me what, feel good. What is it like to be in that rivalry? Because I know what is it? The, the schools they they have a nickname for the rivalry, right? Like the where they play yeah, the River, all sport. Yeah, River City Rumble. River City Rumble. It's good. <laughs> yeah. What was that? What's it like to be in a same city? I mean, the, the rivals. But I know there's a lot of respect from both of you, mm -hmm. uh, and there are probably a lot of things you both can relate to uh, yeah. as a head coach in a Division One program in the city and stuff. I think, but it's mm -hmm. it's fascinating because you're right there with each other, you're competing each other, but at the same time, there's a lot of similarities. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we're, you know, we're, I think like seven or eight miles separate us, you know, and you got state school versus private school and, you know, it's just, it's, it's an easy, you know, kind of love, love to hate, you know, relationship there. To be honest with you, it'd probably be easier if I didn't like those guys over there, right. <laughs> you know what I mean, <laughs> to, to compete against them. So, um, but yeah, we just, you know, it's, you know, the whole athletic department, the whole school, it's just, you know, it's, it's a fun fun in town rivalry and um you know uh every series is you know it doesn't matter who's having a great year who might be having a down year when 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 we get together it's it's always a dog fight you know so um a lot of kids that know each other um 
that have played against each other for a long time. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's what it's about. It's, it's, it's no lot. doubt. It's fun. It's part of sports. It's a rivalry. And I think in the league is growing some rivalries. I mean, I, I, I know talking to Coach Cozart, North Alabama, now they got Jacksonville State in the league. So there's a lot of familiarity there uh, mm-hmm. as well uh, with the other teams. So, I mean, this is kind of what's fascinating about this league is it grows. You got the rivalries. You've got talent coaches players i mean it's 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 all a combination of these things that's kind of really i think one of the more anticipated runs here for the a sun don't you feel like that way you're kind of in for an exciting time oh yeah i think so 100 percent um it seems like it's still growing yeah. <laughs> at Austin p here you know so um yeah i think softball in the a sun is 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 ready to explode we've been good for a long time it's time a lot of people around the country realize it you know yeah so. and i think in the markets like jacksonville helps with that and, and other markets there last question uh mm-hmm. as you go through your fall and then you have the season get going before you know it what are some of the keys for your team to accomplish your internal goals once you get to the start of, get to 2022 yeah i mean one of the biggest things we've been we've been working on all fall um is just our our ability to to become one unit and come together as a team because i think last year Last year, that's what really separated us and got us over the hump, you know, especially at the end of the year, you know, winning those close battles, like, like it was a very, very tight knit, tight knit group, um, you know, great camaraderie and um, uh, just a group that really, really loved each other and never wanted the year to end. Um, so I think, I, you know, and having, you know, we have, like I said, I love our pieces are outstanding, um, but we've got 11 brand new kids you know, an 11 returner. So trying to get those, those guys to match. And like I said, we have, there's a ton of competition, a ton of versatility. So, you know, we've been preaching every day, like, how are we going to handle that? Like, is that going to divide us or are we going to be the best version of ourselves for the betterment of the team? You know what I mean? And however the chips fall, they fall, you know? So, um, and and we're doing a great job with that. You know, the, the kids are, the kids are doing it the right way right now. So, you know, as long as, as long as we keep that and we're, we're working for we instead of me all year. I think, I think we got a shot to be pretty good, but that's, that's the big, big challenge. Cause we just, we don't know each other yet, to be honest with you. And that's what, that's what we're trying to, trying to do. Uh, we're a lot, we're a lot further along right now than we were four weeks ago, but um, you know, that's, that's the challenge when you have a bunch of, a bunch of new faces. So no doubt, but you've got time to kind of sort that out. And uh, we certainly, Look forward to seeing that once you get on the field in February. But in the meantime, uh, I appreciate you taking the time. I know it's a busy time there, scheduling-wise, uh, but uh, always enjoy having you on. Good luck this season, and uh, we'll I'll see you soon. Yeah, my pleasure. Well, I love talking to you, Eric, anytime. But love what you do for the game, man. 